I'm Justin Hayek, investment advisor with PI Financial. Join me on a ride with today's top CEOs. Hear the stories of their greatest achievements and failures. Get the inside on their secrets to investing and the latest on their next big deal. This is Car Ride Confessions of a CEO. Joining me on today's ride is Dan Wilton, CEO and Director of First Mining Gold, an emerging development company with a large resource of 7.3 million ounces gold in the measured and indicated categories, and 3.6 million ounces gold in the inferred category. As an investment banker and partner in a mining-focused private equity investment firm, Dan executed or advised on over $1 billion of financings and more than $10 billion of M&A transactions. So I started, uh, I started my career um uh, in investment banking at mm-hmm. Morgan Stanley in New York. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah, I, they had an on-campus recruiting program. I did my undergrad at Queens, um, and it's kind of how I fell into mining. It's it's very funny, but uh, you know, I was a, sort of a generalist in an M and A pool, and it just so happened that in this pool, one of the first deals that came in uh, was a mining deal, and so they kind of looked around and said, "Well, let's give it to the Canadian kid. He must know something about right, mining." Sure. Uh, and there was a little bit of rationale to it because I was going up uh, in my second year back up to Toronto to work for the guy who ran the Global Mining Group. So, um, uh, yeah, that's kind of literally how I fell into mining. The great thing about this industry is that it self-corrects. Right? Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. forget uh, that this is a cyclical business. Mm-hmm. And um, it's that pro-cyclical activity that really brings about a really bright future for all the all the companies that are developing projects in yep. the industry because there hasn't been investment, there hasn't been any exploration, so there's nothing new. And at some point, the only way that that manifests itself in the market is a higher commodity price, yep. in our case, gold price, uh, just based on supply-demand fundamentals. In terms of your, your background uh, in the investment banking world and mm-hmm. private equity, what advantage do you think that's brought you as now the CEO of a, of a junior mining company? I mean, I think there's a there's a couple. Um, one of which is we've just looked at hundreds and hundreds of projects over my career, mm-hmm. you know, um, and with, as I said, with some great technical people who've who've uh, allowed me to learn a lot about how you look at projects. That sense of perspective and deep dive on you know how to see real value inside projects, yeah. and then it's you know it's it's also just a. Some understanding of the of the investment process and the capital raising process, and it's mm-hmm. not just you know network, and it's not just um, you know deal mechanics, but it's it's really having an understanding of the full suite of alternatives that you have when you need to raise capital, right. because we have to be really creative as you know non cash flowing developers uh, in this environment. You have to be really creative on how you raise capital. Why do you think? First mining gold is so undervalued. So I think it's size. This is a gold endowment in these projects, which I think is unique. Mm-hmm. I think it's um, uh, it's jurisdiction in that all these ounces are in in Canada and in good jurisdictions in Canada to permit and move mines forward. Um, and I think it's team. We've actually put together the team that I think has a real ability to surface value out of these projects, not mm-hmm. just our main ones, but. You know, part of the challenge of a portfolio is you do need to advance a portfolio. Mm-hmm. So there's been some changes uh, in the terms of the team and the direction. Maybe you can address that. Why? Why uh, those changes? Yeah. Well, I'll I'll start with direction because I think direction then determines kind of what you need for the team. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I I can't take credit for this. Uh, the company had and the board had made a decision to pivot kind of towards development. Yeah, really, it was the brainchild of Keith Newmeyer, and uh, those some of the people who watch this will know Keith from mm-hmm. his time in this chair as the <laughs> yeah. CEO of First Majestic. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, Keith and a few other people had a great idea in in what they thought was you know the worst market for gold projects that they'd seen in many many years to mm-hmm. accumulate um, a bunch of projects and warehouse them, and then you know the price will go up and mm-hmm. we'll be able to JV them out and you know kind of the 
It was the mineral bank strategy. Uh, a couple things happened. Um, you know, valuations changed from the real depths of 2015. Uh, it was harder to find real value in projects. Mm -hmm. uh, and second of all, as I often tell people, the real challenge was they actually just bought some good projects, mm -hmm. right? If you're mm -hmm. just gonna land bank things, uh, the best things to land bank are really big and really marginal mm -hmm. because they will catch that yes. you know incremental bid yeah. um, and you'll have all that leverage of having the really out of the money option that yeah. then comes back. Well, you know, I think uh, the challenge is um, the team acquired some projects that really deserve to be developed. Would it be fair to say then the valuations today are even lower than the cost of finding those ounces? Oh, no, it's it's interesting you raise that because it's something mm. we haven't been talking much about, but S&P did a great study um, and their SNL database is, I think, the best database of, of uh, mining data in the world. Uh, and they did a study going back to 2011 looking at the discovery and delineation costs mm. of basically every ounce that's been discovered and put in resource wow. since 2011. Okay. Wow, okay. And that's if you robust. look at that, it's very robust. And you yeah. look at that, and I think their, their uh, total exploration and delineation cost per ounce, and this is around the world, mm -hmm. uh, was like $36 an ounce. We talked about the valuation or depressed valuations that... Um, you, that you guys are suffering from mm -hmm. today. How do you intend on you know getting those valuations up? How do you intend on creating value um, for the company and of course for shareholders? We need to be um, doing things that are advancing our projects. You need to be technically de-risking the projects and um, you need to be then making sure that you're effectively communicating yeah. that. Yeah. And, all, and all of that kind of works itself into essentially Adding value, adding a, high, value. a higher NAV or a higher multiple to NAV. One hundred percent. How would you describe then your your job, your role as a CEO? What is your primary responsibility? Uh, you know, that's uh, I, I, it's a good question. I think first and foremost, uh, it's making sure that you have the right team working mm -hmm. on the project. Mm -hmm. uh, leading that team in prioritization of where you're going to spend your capital and where mm -hmm. you're going to spend your time. Um, and then investor communication uh, of all of that, both around investor communication and capital raising. Yeah, the mining market isn't exactly, uh, the sentiment is pretty poor right now. So what do you think is going to be the catalyst that, you know, puts puts the, the pendulum swinging back into our favor? Fundamentally, um, you know, the, the big challenge right now is more of a, I think, a structural shift um, on the capital provision side in mining. Okay. Where you used to have, you know, individuals and you used to have investment funds that were, um, that were dedicated to investing in mining. You had a dedicated pool of assets that would look to move the next generation of projects mm -hmm. forward. That active management... Um, uh, pool has really been cannibalized by ETFs and passive management. Mm -hmm. But in the end, what will save all of us, and I firmly believe this, is fundamentals. In the end, uh, capital flows can not change the overall supply demand fundamentals of the mining sector. Right. What is the spot price of gold going to be a year from now? So I guess it would be June of 2020. June of 2020, mm -hmm. 1500 bucks. So maybe you can elaborate a little bit on the projects in the sense that what is the flagship asset and uh, what, uh, you know, how do you hope to create value from it? Yeah, so um, flagship assets, I would say, uh, two that we're, we're prioritizing right now. Mm -hmm. um, Spring Pole, which is a gold deposit with a healthy silver component to it. Okay. Um, uh, and it's a large uh, one gram, so lowish grade open pit project mm -hmm. uh, located not that far from infrastructure, 40 kilometers uh, away from road and power, but in a you know more or less industrial forest area. Okay. Um, and so primarily surfacing value at Spring Pool through um, done some great work on metallurgy, mm -hmm. uh, where we think we can increase the recoveries uh, through a different metallurgical process that the team investigated last year. Which I think is going to deliver a lot of value. So we have an updated PEA coming out on that before the okay. end of the year, 
And uh, the real value catalyst at Springpole is ultimately going to be uh, getting its permits. That's Springpole, and it's, you know, uh, it's, if it were producing today, as it was scoped in the PEA, it would be the third or fourth largest producing gold mine in Canada. Like, wow, this that's is incredible. meaningful. It has potential yeah. to produce wow. in some of its better years, 400 to 500,000 ounces a year. This is a major, major potential gold mine. Okay. And then Goldlund is, um, you know, 800,000 ounces M&I and another uh, 850,000 ounces inferred, open pitable, just off the highway. Like it is a really, really developable project mm -hmm. with lots of room to grow. I've been told that uh, you are a manager and mentor to many of your colleagues. <laughs> why, why is that important to you? Oh, it's uh, it's always been important to me as I kind of moved into managerial roles, even mm. you know going back uh, in my investment banking days. Um, I don't know. I've always been involved in in uh, recruiting people. You know, even back in investment banking, it was something that you know building your team uh, and how you get the best out of your team is something that's uh, that's really critical, not only to your success and your outcomes but really critical to uh, your day-to-day -day enjoyment of your life. I enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, Thank no, so me much. too. Yeah, me too. No, thanks for, uh, thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it.